Hello everyone, I trust you've had a good summer riding so far. The 2019 riding season is well underway. Today I'm going to do a review of the JBL Cruise speaker system that I put on my boulevard last summer. Uh, the summer of 2018, I had planned on doing this uh, review last fall and my computer crashed and I delayed a little while in buying a new computer. Um, but anyway, here it is and here it goes. So now I'm going to review the JBL Cruise. I'm not going to go a great uh, great deal into the setup because it's, it's, it's pretty simple. You simply unscrew your mirrors, mount the speaker where the mirrors go, then mount the mirrors on the back of the speaker. Uh, there's several bushings and adapters uh, to adapt it to most any motorcycle. So it's a very uh, simple concept. It's a very good concept and I do like where it relocated the mirrors too. It's a slight change but you can notice the change and, and it's a good change. So uh, it's a really good concept. From there, you simply run the power wire and you are done. Uh, the buttons on top of the unit are large and raised, so they're easy to find, easy to feel. You don't have to look at them while you're riding. Uh, you can just reach up and turn the volume up and down. Some people have complained that there's no fast forward or rewind button or whatever you want to say. I don't put anything on my Bluetooth player that I'm not uh, wanting to listen to, so... That's not an issue for me. Uh, there's a USB charging port on the uh, left speaker uh, that I've used several times. Actually, I have powered my MP3 player on it for all-day rides. It'll play and charge at the same time. So for an all-day ride, uh, it's very handy to have the USB charging port. And uh, it's very easy to sync to devices. Uh, it's not complicated. Simply hit the Bluetooth button and uh, start the pairing process. Very simple. As far as the sound goes, it, they, these speakers have decent sound. Not a lot of bass to them. Uh, they're certainly not going to bump and grind like a car audio system. Uh, but they're good two-lane speakers. Uh, for the interstate, 75, 80, 85 miles an hour, the wind noise really drowns these out and on the interstate uh, highway, I did not find them to be sufficient at all, but they are decent two-lane uh, touring speakers. Uh, you know, 55, 60, 65 miles an hour, no problem. Uh, I would prefer that they had more power to them. They're rated at 20 watts a speaker. I think JBL would do themselves a big favor by boosting the uh, power 30, 35 watts per speaker. And, and at that level, 35, you probably would have a decent interstate highway speaker as well. Um, I use an AGP Tech Bluetooth player uh, to play my music. It'll hold a ton of music. Uh, frankly, it was the first cheap MP3 player that I found on Amazon. Uh, but it seems to amp or boost the audio levels well to the speakers. It did a lot better than my iPhone streaming uh, audio to the JBL Cruise. Uh, the MP3 gives me about four to five hours of playtime. And uh, like I say, for all day or several days of riding, I'll just power it either off the cigarette lighter that I have mounted on the motorcycle or... Uh, the USB charging port on the JBL Cruise. All in all, I'm pretty satisfied with the speakers. Um, if JBL comes out with a more powerful system, I'll definitely upgrade. But I won't be getting rid of these for any other system anytime soon. Um, I've looked at some other systems that boast some enormous, you know, 1,000 watts and this and that out of a little 2.5, 3-inch speakers and I'm kind of leery of those. There's a lot of mixed reviews uh, as far as the durability. Uh, so for now I'm going to stick with the JBL Cruise. Um, like I say, all in all I'm pretty satisfied. I think they're good decent two-lane uh, touring speakers. Well that's my review of the JBL Cruise. Until next time, ride safe and we'll see you out on the highway. I love you.